bookshelves full of how to go into Schwerz, how to prepare for Schwerz, how to get ready for Schwerz, how to build oneself into the sort of person one's supposed to in order to be able to be worthy of receiving the Torah. But there's very little written and spoken about how to leave Schwerz. Now that you went to Schwerz, how do you leave? How do we go away from Schwerz? So it's no coincidence that the Pasha that we'll read this week, the, the first Pasha is after Schwerz, a, there lies here a very deep message, a very deep message on how one's supposed to leave Schwerz, how one's supposed to take away from themselves the Sayanic experience. Um, and I'd like to share with you some insights here. This week's Pasha is well known, is actually a, there's a big discussion in the Gemara, you know, we all know there's five books of Moses. This week's Pasha actually throws up a discussion that there may be more than five books of Moses. You all know that in this week's Pasha, by Shishi, by the Pasha of Shishi, there are two inverted nuns. And in the middle of those two inverted nuns is the posuk that we say regularly when we take the Sefer Torah out of the Oran HaKodesh, Vayibin Saroid. Rashi points out that Vayibin Saroid is not in its correct place. It shouldn't be here, it should be somewhere else. Where exactly it should be is another discussion. But the, the Mephosh in the discussion, the Gemara discusses that this is a separate Sefer on its own. This is a separate book of Moses on its own. When Mashiach comes, it'll get put back into its right place. That's not our discussion. I'm not going to go into that, but that's a fascinating discussion. Moshe Shapiro has a very lengthy share on this sugya. How many books of Moses are there really based on this understanding? But the question is why? Why is this here? If this isn't its right place, why, it's, why is it here? By the way, if Mashiach, when Mashiach comes and that's going to go back into its right place, so then a good panos is being a Sefer Torah writer. Mm -hmm. Because all the Sefer Torah we have in Mashiach, you're going to have to write up all new Sefer Torah. Don't tell the Gaboim that. They'll get a bit nervous here. You know? <laughs> What's the Sefer Torah today? $45,000. You know, there's a lot of, yeah, of panos to be made when Mashiach comes. But the bottom line is, why is it that this is not where it's supposed to be? So the Gemara, Rashi brings it down here, points out that it's coming to separate between two terrible sins. The Jewish people committed two terrible sins, and uh, you can't have these two things together. They can't be too, it's just too much. If you'll be reading on Shabbos, and you'll read the one sin, and then straight away the next sin, you'll, you'll lose all your appetite for toilet, you won't be able to do anything. It's, you can't have them together, we have to separate them. So the Torah puts this, Those, those two psukim we put in the middle, and it separates between these two terrible puranios, these two terrible sins that the Jewish people committed. So the, the discussion of what are the two sins. So the second sin is quite easy. It's talking about the misoinanim, the Erev Rav got the Jewish people uh, complaining about the, the, the dietary uh, problems that they were having in the Midbar. They were eating man, the, the menu was boring, they wanted meat. It's all discussion. They started quetching and complaining about the, uh, about the menu that Hashem was providing. And that obviously, we know what happened. It was a terrible... Uh, it was a terrible kitrug and there was a terrible consequences about that. So that's the second sin and we don't have any problems. That's quite clear what happened there. There's a discussion trying to find out what the first sin is. The psukim that come before, the psukim that come before the split, we're trying to separate between two sins. So the second sin is vayi ha'am kemisoinanim. Ra, boizna Hashem, v'yishma Hashem. And Hashem got very angry. That, that was, they were complaining and catching about the food. For the old Jewish pastime. But, and, and, a, and a terrible sin, because Boch is taking a bit time, he's looking after you, have no gratitude, whatever, and there was a terrible, terrible consequence as a result of that kvetching. But, but it's difficult to see, if you read the psukim, where's the first sin? The psukim says, Vayisu mihar Hashem derech shleishes yomim. The Jewish people left uh, the Har Hashem, they left Hasinai. Derech shleishes yomim, they went the, the, the path of three days, discussion of what that means. Vaaron bris Hashem noise lifnayim, the Aaron of the bris, the, you know, the Jewish people, when they went, they went to the Oran of in front of them with the COVID. Uh, and the cloud of glory, the cloud of Hashem was on them as they were cleveling. For, and the, so where, where is there any hint of a sin here? The Jewish people left Hasinai with the clouds of glory escorting them. Doesn't sound like there was anything terribly... Uh, What's so bad about that? Why can't that? And then afterwards have the post. Where's the avaria? Where's the terrible sin? Where's this such a dardily deed that you can't, you can't, you can't put this together? It's crazy. You can't, so what's going on here? 
What were supposed to people, Jewish people do? Not leave Har Sinai. They left Har Sinai. So what were supposed to do? So the Gemara, the Gemara in Shabbos on the Kuf Tezayin, oh, right there. The Gemara discusses this. What exactly was the sin? I'm going with one of the, the drachim. Yeah? There's a whole other discussions. I'm going with one thing that Toysus picks up. The Shittas Toysus is, uh, is Choyleq with Rashi, but Toysus brings down here, yeah, he says, what was the Peronis Rishayna? What was this terrible sin that they did? Where, where's the Avera? Where's the terrible thing that they did Yeah. Um, so he brings a Midrash, says it's a Midrash, says, shenos sinai. Derek yomim. They left Ha Sinai. Ketinoik. Like a young child who leaves school. If you ever watch the kids going to school, it's a very slow, dragged out process, yeah? You ever been there when they leave, don't stand in front of the door or the gate where they come out of. Kids leave school, the bell rings, it's a, it's a stampede out of them. So apparently that's how Tosis is saying, based on the Midrash, and that's how the Jewish people left Hasinai. That's how they left Hasinai. Was that they left Hasinai? They're supposed to leave Hasinai, but how did they leave Hasinai? They ran, they fled, they, 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 they went, they went. Uh, they were learning in the in, in the yeshiva of Akkadosh Bochu. The Rosh Yeshiva was Hashem himself. They had the best Magid Yishirim that anyone ever had. You had Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron Akoyin. You had, you had the greatest Talmud Chachamim ever alive. You were learning in yeshiva and you fled. You ran away from you ran away from the the, the, the yeshiva. That that's the. Uh, that's the uh, claim against the Jewish people, and that was the terrible sin that they did that prevents these two psukim from being together. So there are a couple of questions there which make this process very difficult to understand. And, and uh, in trying to understand this and coming to an answer, we'll come away with a very profound lesson here, a very important principle that a person needs to know. First of all, we know that the Jewish people didn't do anything, they didn't travel, they didn't move, unless the Ananakovit moved. We know they moved, they moved to the Ananakovit. The Jewish people sat, they arrived in a certain place, had to know where to, to camp, because the Ananakovit stopped, they knew this is where we're camping. They never knew how long they were going to be there. It couldn't have been easy making a wedding or preparing of a mitzvah or anything, because you didn't know where you were going to be. Uh, you could be, uh, you send out the invitations that we're going to have a mitzvah yeah, in two days' time, and in two days' time you could be on the other side of the world. They didn't, it couldn't have been easy living like that. But that's how they lived. The honor and the covet got up and moved. The Jewish people moved. The honor and the covet stopped. They stopped. So it's, it's the assumption, it, I mean, the Apostle says they went with the clouds of glory. They, they went with the clouds. They didn't just pack up and leave. They didn't decide on their own bat. Okay, you know, we got the Torah. It's enough already with all this learning. And they fled from Hasinai. The, the honor and the covet obviously started moving. So what were they supposed to do? Obviously, they had to travel with the Anunakovit. What were they supposed to do? Stay at us? You know, when the Anunakovit's going, the Anunakovit's going, you have, to, you have to move. So, so, so what do you mean they, 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 they fled? So, you'll tell me, yeah, what they did. Of course, they had to leave. The Anunakovit's moving, they have to leave. But who told them to run? They could have gone slowly. They could have gone with a bit of regret. They should have, maybe their attitude was incorrect. Okay, fine. Assuming that's true, but then why is that such a terrible Avera? Where's the terrible sin here? And no way, I mean, you, you go through some passages in the Torah, there's some terrible stuff written. There's some things written there which, uh, you know, and you go through the Tehocha that we had not so long ago, a few weeks ago. How do you manage to eat Cholent after you've read that? Torah doesn't seem bothered about that. We can have Tehocha after Tehocha, an entire description of the Holocaust. An entire description of the Chumash about what's going to be during the Holocaust and all the suffering the Jewish people have had. And then we don't separate the Pashas with, you know, to make it a bit easier. So the Jewish people left Hasinai. Leaving Hasinai wasn't a problem because the Anunna Kovit left. They were supposed to leave. But they went with a little bit of a childishness. They ran away a little bit. Okay, fine. So what's the big, uh, what's the big area? What's the big uh, claim and taina that we have to, we have to ruin all our Sifrei Torah? <laughs> we have to, have to, we have to rewrite the Sefer Torah because of that. That's a big event. Putting Sukim in the in the wrong place, with two big nuns to let you know. Like, here's a separation. We can't have these two together. Where's the big problem here? So there's a there's a very uh, 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 almost a frightening idea here. The 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 briskerov, there's a, the the Chazal tell us, woe to us, the yoyma din, woe to us for yoyma tochocha, woe to us for the day of judgment. Everyone's going to be judged. You had a Torah, you knew what you were supposed to do. Everybody was responsible for achieving what he was supposed to achieve. You're going to be asked, you know, why did you keep Shabbos? Did you do business honestly? Did you speak and horror? All the things a person knows. And then there's, woe to us for the day of rebuke. 
So the Biskrov asked, what's these two things? What's, what's Yom Adin and what's Yom Once you've gone through Yom Adin, <laughs> there's not much left. Well, well, what's Yom HaTechocha? So he explained like this. Let's say a person grew up, he didn't know about Shabbos. He grew up, he grew up amongst the Goyim. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was living in the, the Amazon forests or whatever. He didn't know anything about Yiddishkeit, whatever. Comes Yom Adin, they say to him, why do you keep Shabbos? He says, what's Shabbos? I'm only talking about, I don't know, I don't know about Shabbos. What's the Shabbos? They say to him, you're out. You're, you're, Shabbos is not responsible for you off. All the things in the Torah that he didn't know about, that he wasn't expected to, each person, according to his level, is going to get judged. And what you're not responsible for, you clean, you're fine. But then there's another judgment. It's called Yom HaTechochem. Woe to us for the day of rebuke. What's rebuke? Rebuke is, let's take out your Torah. Let's take out your personal moral basis and see how consistent you were in your life. So, so, you know, they take out the video and they show you giving a, a very nice discourse on, uh, on being nice to other people. And you shouldn't hurt other people and it's not nice to hurt other people, whatever. And then they show you the video of you insulting your next door neighbor the one day. Yeah? So you judge yourself. That inconsistency. Uh, Hashem will ask you, why don't you get up for the, for the Nate's minion? They'll tell him what you're talking about. Yeah, you made me lazy. Well, it's my fault. Uh, you made me a guy that needs to sleep more than everybody else. Uh, what do you want? I have a weak constitution. I need to sleep. So they take out the bed and they show you getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning to watch some uh, game on the other side of the world or something, yeah, or, or running to a business or whatever. You see, you weren't, you weren't lazy. You see, for some things you could get up, for other things you couldn't get up. We all know this problem. We all have this problem. We all, we all grapple with this ourselves. So that's called Yom HaTochocha. That's called the day of rebuke, where, where you'll be judged in your own inner contradictions, you'll be judged. So there's Yom HaDin, you'll be judged for what the Torah says. So there you have a, you know, there you've got a pretty good chance. There you've got, you've got a good lawyer, you've got a fighting chance of getting off the, uh, off, uh, off the hook there. But the Yom HaTechocha is not so easy to get off there because there you're contradicting yourself. No one demanded this of you. You, you yourself contradict yourself. So on the basis of that, um, I heard this from Ramosh Aaron Stern's Zatzal, the uh, late Mashgiach of Kamenetz. It, it's, quite, it's quite insightful. It's an amazing, amazing insight he brought down. Sorry? No, that's the Briskarov. What I'm going to say now I heard from Ramosh Aaron Stern. But where did he get that idea from? Who, the Briskarov? Yeah. I don't know. The Briskarov said what he said. I'm sure he had his sources. If the Briskarov said it, it's, uh, I assume he had, he had his, uh, he had his, I don't know what, he, I don't know what his sources were. But, but Ramon Sharon Stern actually shows this in our subject, what we're dealing with, with Hasina, actually shows it in the Psukim. A very, very fascinating insight here. Yeah. Um, what time is she supposed to end? I don't know what is the time, where we're holding. I don't want to keep anybody here longer. When you're finished. Ah, oh, be careful. You ask them, they know me. I, I like the sound of my own voice. I keep going for hours. No, Bukh Hashem, I'm to work. I have meetings as well. Sorry? Between 10.15 and 10.30. What's the time now? Not even 10.05. Ah, but still, we've got plenty of time. Okay. Good. There's not much more to, to add here. I just want to add this last piece here. The, uh, the Posik in Bashalach, after the Jewish people, Kanam and Yitzrayim, they went through Yam Suf. They sang uh, Shiraz Hayam. They sang the song in the Yam. And then they, uh, they had to leave. They had to, they had to leave the Yam. They were on the way to Asina. They had a 49, 50 day journey uh, to get to Asina, to get to Shvurs. So the Posuk says, The Yasa Moshe Yisrael me Yam Suf, the Yotzi, El Midbar Shul, the Yelchus Shleishes Yomim. They journeyed, Moses journeyed the Jewish people from Yam Suf. Uh, and they went into the Midbar and they went for three days in the Midbar, etc., etc. Velom uh, they didn't find water. Fine. Rashi points out the word Vyasa Moshe Yisrael. Why does it say Vyasa Moshe Yisrael? It should have said Vyasa Yisrael. The Jewish people traveled. Why does it say Moshe traveled the Jewish people? I mean, that would be the crude way of translating it. So Rashi points out on the spot. Where's the Rashi here? Hasion Balkochon. They were forced to move. They didn't want to leave. They were forced to move. Why? The Mitzrayim had uh, decorated their wagons when they came to chase the Jewish people to bring them back. They uh, decorated their wagons with all sorts of silver and gold and precious stones and diamonds. Um, all this, uh, this precious uh, treasures got washed up onto the beach and the Jewish people found it there. The, uh, the wealth that they found on the, on the Yam was greater than what they took out of Mitzrayim. We know when the Jewish people left Mitzrayim, they took an enormous amount of wealth with them. They took, uh, they took a couple hundred years of back pay with them. That enormous, enormous wealth that they took from the Mitzrayim. It says what they took at the Yam was even greater than that. There was enormous treasure houses lying on the beach for everyone to pick up. 
So what happened? The Alana Kovach started moving. It was time to leave. And the Jewish people, they were busy. They leave now? You know what's lying on the beach? How can I leave now? So Moshe had to come and force them to leave. That's what the positivity was. Yasa Moshe is Yisrael. Rashi says, Balkochen, he came to force them to leave. What happened to the Anna Kovach leaving? The Anna Kovach moving. Well, why aren't you going? And Moshe has to come and has to force them here to leave. So now, go back to our Sinai. Tanya is not a busy sitting learning Torah. They're getting the Torah from, from, from Hashem. Suddenly the Anna Kovach starts moving. What do they do? They close the Gemaras and they go. What's your tiny against the Jewish people? Where are you going? You're in Asinai. You're learning Torah. Where are you running to? What are you talking about? The Anana Kovid's going. <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to listen to the Anana Kovid. I, I, I just work here. I, I don't, what do you mean? What am I supposed to do? Not leave? So, so in Yoim Adin, they would get away with that. You're 100% right. 100% right. And Yoim Adin, the Jewish people, you're clean. The Anana Kovid's going. You've got to follow the Anana Kovid. But just one second. A few weeks ago, you guys were sitting on the beach. Was he collecting wealth? Yeah? And the Anna Kovic started moving. Why didn't you run off to the Anna Kovic then? What were you doing then? If you so, you know, so machmir on doing whatever the Anna Kovic said, that's why you had to close your Gemara and flee out of the base Midrash. So what happened a few weeks ago on the beach? Where's your consistency here? You're not being straight. A few weeks ago, you were busy collecting diamonds on the beach, which Hashem said you could take. They, they weren't doing anything wrong. They weren't, they weren't involved in theft or whatever. But the Anana Kovic started moving. Why didn't you move? You tell me, you tell me, you tell me now about Hasina, I have to listen to the Anana Kovic. So why didn't you listen to the Anana Kovic then? So you see, in your track record, in your, in your, in your uh, CV, that you have the ability not to listen to the Anana Kovic when it suits you. So how come you fled from the Torah? Why were you running away from Hasina? That's the Tochocha. Then a Kodesh Baruch who says that I can't tolerate. You ran away from Asina because on uncovered went you're out. It wasn't the best thing to do. The Shia ended. You closed your Gemara. You left. Well, you're supposed to show a little bit more love for Torah. Maybe stay a few minutes extra, whatever. Okay, fine. That's your Madin. You were a naughty boy, but there's nothing that terrible about what you did. But you contradict yourself in your own actions, in your own behavior. Hashem says that's too terrible. That's called Puronios. Those two things, that and the Jewish people quetching about food and, 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 and having total disregard for what Hashem was doing for them, complete ingrates, those two things, you put them together, that'll destroy the world. I can't have those two things together. That I have to change. So you see from here what upsets Hashem. What upsets Hashem is not that we, we're not perfect, that we fall, we fall from perfect. And uh, there are times where we're supposed to go to Shear and, oh, hey, I'm tired, I had a busy day, I don't go to the Shear or I come late or I leave early, whatever. That, as I said, with a reasonably good lawyer, you'll be able to get away with that one. I'm not suggesting one should do that. I'm not providing you with a, uh, you know, you'll tell the Roskola, I came late because sure said you're allowed to. No, that's not what I'm, I'm saying here. But it's, it's when, we, when we contradict ourselves in our own lives, in our own moral standards, that's where Hashem says, oh, that I can't tolerate. That's too big for me to tolerate. That's, that's the vote here. The vote is, is you ran out of the Hasina like a child fleeing from the, from the mountain. So, so, so why didn't you do that when you were sitting on the yam? So you showed yourself what's important. You, you, you indicated what's more important. Getting more gold and diamonds is more important than, uh, than yaring an extra little shear from Moshe Rabbeinu. That, a Kodesh Baruch Hu says, that's, that's, that's Tom. So this is a lesson we always speak about in the yeshiva after shvurs is something that gets discussed quite often in the yeshiva is how do we leave shvurs? You know, they always say that the average yeshiva bocha goes to sleep on, uh, he learns through the night on shvurs and he goes to sleep afterwards and he wakes up on Rosh Chodesh Elul. You know, that's a, that's a joke in the yeshiva world, you know, it's a, you can see some smiles if you know what I'm talking about. It's a, uh, it's a, unfortunately, it's, a, I mean, it's not true, but it's unfortunately, there is, there's an enormous amount of in inspiration, enormous amount of uh, being fired up coming into Schwurz, and there's unfortunately a very big Yerida uh, after, after Schwurz, where we kind of like, we just sink back into our old ways, and you know, the, you walk into the best Midrash, and the fire is not burning like it used to, whatever. That's what's being described here. The, uh, the way we leave, the way we go through these next few weeks, Obviously, the Jewish year turns quite radically on its head as we leave as we leave Hasina. We start going into the uh, into the months of Tammuz and Am and Av, which is a whole sugya on their own. How to use Tammuz and Av properly? Tammuz and Av are wonderful opportunities, even though they're filled with with difficult periods and difficult events in Jewish history. But uh, now's not the time to get into it. But um, maybe another time we'll discuss Tammuz and Av. What two wonderful, wonderful months where a person has incredible opportunities to a uh, 
to, to out of out of the darkness to to generate enormous amount of light. We know that the Tammuz and Av were given to Asaf. Asaf got the months of Tammuz and Av. He rules in those months, so uh, that's why we've always had so much Taurus in those months. But there is also an understanding here. There's an incredible understanding where one can have we can have enormous opportunities of building and taking from that darkness enormous light. But that's part of the problem. Part of the problem is is we leave Hasinai and we tend to we tend to sort of distance ourselves from the inspiration we got. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of chizuk to maintain that inspiration that we had at Hasinai um, through these months. And it's important, therefore, to start on the right foot. When one leaves Hasinah, when one leaves Shuas, is to leave it on the right foot. And the lesson being told us here, a very important lesson, is as you leave Hasinah, the most important thing to look out for is the internal inconsistencies. You know, the real difficult... I find myself sometimes, find myself sometimes giving a, you know, giving a bokeh and they shiv a bit of a, you know, patch for coming late or whatever, and I have to stop myself and say, <laughs> where were you yesterday? <laughs> so, you know, you, it's very easy to, uh, you know, to, to, to give nice talks and explain these things, but, you know, Hashem's going to call you and say one well, day, no, you know, you gave a beautiful share on being consistent or whatever, but where were you? And they got this on, you know. <laughs> if we didn't think they had video recorders in Shemayim, we now know that they, uh, Hashem's video calls are a lot more sophisticated than this thing staring at me. So um, hopefully, amidst Hashem, Hashem will give us a bracha, we'll be able to take away the lessons of Asina, we'll be able to take the message, this incredible message, yeah, from uh, from the Psukim, we'll be able to take it and utilize it. Amidst Hashem, this year we won't have to have a Tisha B'Av, we'll be able to all be together back in Eretz Yisrael, this day some Midrash. The Midrash says that all the Bata Midrash, all the Bata Knesses in Golis will all, those that are worthy, uh, there's some, uh, I'm not sure that they're going to make it back to Eretz Yisrael, but those that are worthy will come back to Eretz Yisrael and we'll all be together in Eretz Yisrael and you'll be sitting in your same place in your Mokham Kuvur with, uh, in, in, in your Shlomo Kosh, with Mitzvah Shem next year, I shouldn't have to come out here, we'll all be together there and we shall have Yeshua G'dayla.